ca slash here and now toronto Metro Morning Time is 15 minutes before 8. This is CBC Radio 1. It's Monday, January 16th. For over 10 years, Toronto lawyer David Lepofsky fought the TTC. As a person with a visual impairment, he wanted subway operators to announce each stop along a route. And that wasn't happening consistently. So he filed a human rights complaint with the Ontario Human Rights Commission and won his case. The TTC was ordered to ensure all its drivers announced subway stops. But the decision said nothing about bus routes and their operators. David Lepofsky has a new human rights complaint against the TTC and joins me to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. So you've launched another human rights complaint? Unfortunately, I've had to. How long did the last one take to be resolved? Well, from when I first raised the issue with the TTC over 10 years, from when I filed the complaint, it was September of 2001, the TTC fought me every step of the way, and it was one in June of last year, and within eight weeks of being ordered to start complying with the Human Rights Code, the TTC did what they claimed throughout they couldn't do, which is to get their their subway operators to consistently announce all subway stops. But 10 years from point, point A to point B. Uh, it was very long and very frustrating and facing TTC giving making up every excuse for doing what they sh- uh, for not doing uh, what they should have been doing all along, which is uh, announcing uh, reliably all subway stops. And what has their response been to the latest complaint? Well, what's really unbelievable is this, uh, Andy, is uh, you'd, normally if an organization, especially one that's part of the government, got you know senior municipal politicians at the head, uh, if, if, if they haven't been in compliance with the law and they hire lawyers and they and they fight and they lose. You'd figure when another case comes along that's pretty pretty similar that they'd they'd have learned their lesson, but it unfortunately seems that they haven't. They they are uh, taking pretty much the same position in in my complaint about announcing all bus stops as they took uh, in my case on subways. In the subway case, they said uh, we're doing what we have to do, and we promise that we're going to institute an automated system in some time that will announce all stops. Uh, on the subway route, um, I didn't hold my breath, which is good because they didn't com- comply with instituting that automated system along the timelines they had promised me in the 90s. Um, now they're saying the same thing about the buses. They're saying, well, we don't have to require our operators to announce all stops uh, on the buses and streetcars. It's it's okay if they just announce major intersections and your own stop if you request it. And by the way, we are going to institute an automated system sometime in the future. Mm-hmm to announce all bus stops. Now, the important thing is to tell you this, two things. First, I'm not asking them to spend a a penny on new technology. Uh, Every bus has, and streetcar has a driver, and I hope they know where the stops are, so they ought to be able to announce them. Uh, And the second thing is, their current practice is inadequate because um, right now what's what's necessary for me as a blind person is to find a driver and ask them, to announce my stop and hope that they will. The problem is that sometimes they don't, not because they're bad people, they're good people, but because uh, if you're driving a bus route back and forth every day, it's easy to forget the particular one you were asked to announce. It's can, we, can, more can, we go to the, can we go to the good people who are the drivers? Some of them voluntarily. You know, Some of them sing songs to us. But some of them will announce every single stop. They seem to think that this is part of what they're there for. Have you ever gone, I'm just curious, is this an issue with the drivers, with their union? Have you ever gone around the TTC to ask the people in the union whether this is a problem for them? Uh, I haven't asked the union, and the TTC itself has never said that the union um, has opposed this. I mean, why wouldn't they just, sorry, do the right thing? This is a question for them. I don't understand why there's so much resistance to this unless somewhere someone along the line thinks it's a pain in the butt. Well, it's very frustrating, and I don't have an answer. Unfortunately, I, have, I had to sue them to, to get them to announce all subway stops. I think anybody listening would say, hey, if the human rights code requires them to announce all subway stops for the benefit of blind Hey, common patients, decency. Like, Forget the human yeah, rights yeah, code. Yeah, the common sense would say, and good <laughs> service. By the way, I've had any number of members of the public come up and approach me and say, that, why have they been fighting me? And I'm talking about strangers in restaurants. They, they, they just, people can't believe they're this resistant. It would provide good service for sighted people on the bus who who are reading or who don't know that you know going to a stop for the first time. Uh, some operators, as you said, Andy, do announce all stops. Some announce major intersections, like the TTC requires. Some don't announce anything. Now, last question: You're the man behind the provincial government's decision to enact Ontarians with Disabilities Act. How will the new legislation, or will the new legislation, change things so that people like you don't have to spend time filing human rights complaints? Well, the, the 
government under the new Accessibility Frontierians with Disabilities Act, which the McGinty government brought in last year, uh, will be required to set up uh, standards development committees that will hopefully, for example, in the area of public transit, set a standard that would require this of all bus uh, public transit providers in the province so that someone like me doesn't have to go fight this one, uh, one issue at a time. But in the meantime, I've got to go back and, and unfortunately fight the TTC because they are yet again just battling every step of the way mm-hmm. rather than doing the right thing. We asked them, by the way, uh, to talk to us about this. They declined to do so on air. I'm not sure why. We'll continue to ask. And thanks for catching us up with us. Thanks so much. David Leposky is a lawyer and has filed his second human rights complaint against the TTC after waiting 10 years for the resolution of the first one. Maybe you're a driver. Maybe you have a window on this that uh, that is not clear to us. We'd love to hear from you via the Vox Box, 416-205-5807. I mean, I have to do time checks and weather checks all the time. You know, it's routine, it's tedious, it's repetitious, it's not, you know, the most engaging thing in the world, but it's part of the job. Why wouldn't a bus driver just be able to say, you're at Ontario Street, you're at Parliament Street, you're at Broadview, what, what's the problem? Maybe you have a solution, 416-205-5807. Okay, here's Jim. On the 401, there uh, is a delay over by Victoria Park, and this is in the westbound lanes, the westbound express lanes. Uh, It's actually past Victoria Park, near the exit to the Don Valley. Accident there, it is being investigated, and that is slow. As well, coming down the 400, southbound to eastbound 401 on that ramp, working to clear an accident. Left lane blocked short time ago. 409 eastbound approaching the 401. That's the scene of earlier trouble, as well as on 403 eastbound by Aaron Mill. So you may encounter delays in those areas as well. On uh, the Don Valley, back to normal on the southbound parkway and normal buildup coming in on the Gardner Expressway. Eight minutes before eight on CBC Radio 1. Over the Christmas holidays, writer Marnie Woodrow dropped by our studios to talk about the culture of rudeness that is on the rise in Toronto. Today, she stops by to talk about volunteering, something she finds too few of us are prepared to do. Good morning, Marnie. Good morning, Andy. So you have volunteered to talk to us about volunteering, and you volunteer yourself. I volunteer at a fitness and literacy program called Running and Reading, which is in Regent Park. How'd you get into it? I saw your name actually associated.